Hello my stock universe. This week's extra video review video is on the Bundesliga where we last looked uh, around a month ago after Bayern beat Dortmund. And back then we already had a two-way title race between Bayern and Leverkusen. Can Stuttgart join it? Stuttgart looked like the real deal at the moment as well. And so yes, we talk about the Bundesliga, the league that probably has the last uh, still unbeaten team in the top five leagues. Yes, there's PSV who have still an even better rag record, but Leverkusen is probably definitely one, of, it's definitely one of the most exciting teams in the league. But this weekend, they almost got beaten. They almost got, got beaten, but they showed the fight back quality of a champion. We also had this week one of the wow results of the season so far anywhere in Europe. And Bayern is not unbeaten anymore, so we have to talk about that. But um, since it has been a month, I want to quickly hit the previous three rounds and then uh, we'll go a little bit deeper into the current round. And there's also a DFP Pokal in there as well. Where it's also one of the more interesting cup competitions so far. Yes, there are a few that have not really got, got going, but the DFP Pokal this year is really exciting because uh, there will be a new winner, at least not one that has won the Pokal since the last century. So I think that is pretty cool in a way itself. So let's get started with round 11. As always, there are short videos on these rounds that I will also link up there. Uh, the standout result in round 11 was definitely Stuttgart's 2-1 win over Dortmund. Stuttgart had a little bit of wobble around at that time, but that Dortmund win, that's fully deserved. Yes, they were 1-0 down through Füllkrug, but they had so many chances. They missed a penalty. Undorf uh, scored an equal in Girasi with a penalty. He came back from injury. You know, he had this crazy scoring form. Then when he went out, suddenly Stuttgart had a little wobble. Uh, they established the win, they should have won by way more than this 2-1. We also had Bayern Munich uh, having to fight against Heidenheim, also showing signs of, yeah, it's not all quite right. Uh, we had a relegation scrap between Bochum and Köln, that ended in a 1-1. Uh, Leverkusen 4-0 over Union Berlin, and also the top result, Gladbach 4-0 over Wolfsburg, a Gladbach team that I cannot really get a feel on, because they have some really good results and then they have some... WTF results in there as well. Uh, the good results in round 12, and again, short video up there. Um, this is right after the international break. Gladbach had a 2 lead in Dortmund uh, and looked a good 4 for the win after half an hour, but almost immediately Sabitzer had equalized in Fulk, uh, Sabitzer and Fulk had equalized in Bino Kittens, gave them the lead just before the half, and then Daniel Marlen. With an empty net goal in the 97th minute, uh, wins it for Dortmund. But again, Dortmund, yeah, this was more luck in a way that uh, than really being convincing. Convincing was Bayern at Köln because they were in full control, only scoring one goal. Harry Kane, of course, going crazy. A significant result was also Wolfsburg's 2-1 over Stuttgart in that round. And Leverkusen stayed top of the league with a very convincing 3-0 over Bremen. Let's move to round 13 again, short video up there. Um, the main story was that Bayern Munich against Union Berlin was postponed because of a really bad, bad snowfall. If you saw my Austrian Bundesliga review videos, I talked about it as well. Uh, nothing was going in Munich. It was even worse than here in Austria, where yes, was not great, but there was nothing happening in Munich, especially on the Saturday. Uh, Saturday. Crucially enough, Augsburg then could play because there was enough time because the snowfall stopped. So uh, while Munich and Augsburg are close to together, they had the extra day there. Um, in any case, uh, the big one was Leverkusen against Dortmund, uh, where Leverkusen probably should have won this comfortably. Dortmund took a very early lead uh, and then went on super defensive, where Leverkusen then eventually found the equal through Bon Boniface probably should have won that one. It was the first time I really thought, oh, this is where Leverkusen dropped points. This is only the second time that Leverkusen dropped points, because the other time was when they went to Munich and actually uh, saved a draw there as well. But they were really, really good for that draw themselves. Also, again, gladbach Hoffenheim was a game that was not that good, but Gladbach again getting a big win. Frankfurt, though, losing. And Frankfurt is a team that I really also have a very, very hard time getting a grip on. Wolfsburg also. 
Warworth were also not a good goal team at the moment. Again, another loss. And that leads us now in the current round that on the past week weekend. And I think the standard result we don't have to look far. Frankfurt Bayern Munich. 5-1. Coming out of nowhere. Both teams, and we'll talk about the Pokal, have been eliminated by Saarbrücken. And Frankfurt just had that in midweek. Frankfurt actually also only finished in second place in the Conference League. So also not a great show. So Frankfurt really on a wobble. And then this result out of nowhere. Bayern, yes, they had not played for a long time because they're out of the Pokal. They could not play because of only Uni Berlin. So I think the last game was a Champions League game. Still, uh... Being 3-0 down after 36 minutes, and especially if you watch the goals, I think the one by Bimba, the, uh, the, 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 the tunnel, no one on this Bayern defense looks good. No one, absolutely no one, including Manuel Neuer. Yes, Kimmich gets them just before they have a goal back, and you and then they had another chance. But uh, but in the end, it, it's again an Bimba and a Knauf, Knauf goal, where uh, Frankfurt is just steamrolling the defense. And it is just it just did not look good at all what was going on there. It is really a result where uh, Frankfurt, in the, Frankfurt were losing the XG battle, uh, where Frankfurt really uh, steamed past Bayern Munich and saying, you know, you guys did not come for, 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 for the fight. And maybe this is exactly what Frankfurt needed to get a little bit going. Another big result was Union Berlin finally got a win again. And emphatically, so with Volland, Hollerbach and Kaufmann um, scoring, uh, pulling up 3-0. Yes, player pulls one back. But that was uh, important. First game under Nenna, Bielica, new coach. We know I know him relatively well because he worked here for Klagenfurt and he worked also for Austria Vienna. Uh, Klagenfurt very successful Austria Vienna. Yes, he bore, uh, he coached him in a Champions League, but was kind of on the back of a championship. It did not work out that well. Although I don't think it was entirely his doing. So I'm curious how he will do with Union Berlin. The start, at least, was good. Werder Bremen Augsburg is no, not notable because the second goal for Bremen came when two Augsburg players wanted to get uh, substituted. However, the referee hadn't blown the whistle and so Bremen could just more or less walk into the goal. Freiburg continued also a really good goal form with Michael Gregoric, Austrian striker, being uh, again uh, the decisive one. But then we have two really big games um, that came in addition. Dortmund against Le Le uh, Leipzig was the evening game. Majorly conditioned by the early red card from Mats Hummels, who, yeah, a player of his sort should not have this, uh, get such a card. He tried to take down the Leipzig attacker um, in the penalty box, but then it was just outside, and so he gets a, a red card instead of just a yellow card and a penalty. Honestly, I probably would have taken my chances and. You know, if you play this uh, 11v11, I don't know. In any game, uh, then they even fall behind through an own goal by Menze Baini. Niklas Süle, though, a uh, thumping shot <laughs> from the side, uh, gets an equalizer. And that's with 10 men. And you really thought, hmm, Dortmund, maybe there's something there. However, Christoph Baumgartner quickly re-stabbed the lead. And then Dortmund, yes, uh, they have to open up open spaces for Le Leipzig to finally uh, convert in the uh, 91st through Paulson, but there should have been more. The way that Paulson wiggles past the defenders uh, is all, all also fun. But Fulkrug just two minutes later pulls one back, and there was the chance then potentially there to get an equal. But I think Leipzig, you know, Dortmund will really like uh, what they showed, and they showed Kerker, and there's a little bit of an asterisk because he had to play 75 minutes with 10 men, but in the end, Leipzig was good for that win. And then Stuttgart against Leverkusen. Honestly, uh, absolutely great game. No team really hold, holding back. First half was all about Stuttgart. Stuttgart had an XG of over three versus Le uh, Leverkusen just at a half, something, something like that. Stuttgart really created many ch chances well, all over Leverkusen. And took a, a, a lead really nice. And that's a bit of just can put it into the M empty net. However, Sign of the champions, Leverkusen reacted. Florian Wirtz, right after the half, gets an equal. It was not an easy um, goal to convert, although it looks uh, it looks deceivingly easy. But you know, there was a little wobble in, in their way on the Boniface assist. And then actually, Leverkusen had the upper hand. And Leverkusen could, could have won one, especially uh, Jonathan Tah 
could have uh, gotten the winner. So this was a really, really intense game. Two very different halves. Um, I think the draw doesn't help any, anyone. Actually, the one that is most happy is Bayern because despite losing 5-1, uh, none of the others only gained a point on them. So, you know, it's really, really interesting. If Stuttgart would have won, they would have been above Bayern. Yes, with a game came in hand. Leverkusen would have distanced themselves even more from Bayern. would have been a little bit more favorites for the champ championship. The last game, Köln against Mainz, typical relegation for the nil-nil. So currently we have Leverkusen, four points ahead of Bayern. However, Bayern have the game against Union Berlin in hand, which they probably will win. Stuttgart are behind. This Stuttgart side reminds me a lot of the late 90s Stuttgart side under Yogi Löw with, um, you know, the Magic Triangle, Bobic, Balakov um, and Elba that eventually fizzled out that I kind of expect that. But I think Stuttgart is good for a top four finish. Uh, I think they're a better team than Leipzig, although they've lost to Leipzig uh, early in the season, which was a non-deserved loss, uh, at least in the size of, of, of it. Dortmund, uh, serious questions have, have, have to be asked. I think Dortmund will have a hard time making it into the Champions League. But European spots should be well in for Dortmund. If we look on the bottom, Union Berlin have moved up. It's now Mainz and Darmstadt, the relegation at Köln. Also not really out of it. Um, you know, I like Köln. For them, it's, you know, transfer ban and losing important players. It's really, really hard to get uh, back running. Uh, you see Mittable, Gladbach and Wolfsburg. Uh, as I said, I have, a, I think there's a little bit more upside to Gladbach. And Freiburg also slowly getting it going again. So that might be interesting. Uh, curious to see also how long Hoffenheim will stay up there. Uh, if you look at expected standings, you see Frey, Freiburg just behind Stuttgart. Yes, Dortmund still ahead of Stuttgart. I just think that the Stuttgart team is for real. I think it's a really, really strong Stuttgart team that should be much higher rated than it currently is. Heidenheim and Darmstadt, the two promoted teams, are still the odds on favorites to go down. I have a feeling that one of them will survive. I usually, I, it's not uncom uncommon. And then we have to see who is come, coming up from the second league because there are some interesting teams in there. Like we could have two Hamburg teams in there. So yeah, let's see, let's see. Hold, hold, holding my horses, Hertha and Schalke not looking good. By the way, uh, the upcoming round also has a super uh, game between Bayern and Stuttgart. I mean, that's uh, take your popcorn. Leverkusen Frankfurt, you know, all the big uh, protagonists from, from, from this would play each other. Other than that, we have um, El Plastico between Leipzig and Hoffenheim. And I think that's basically it with the great games. Um, Gladbach Bremen sounds like a traditional duel, but uh, it's both mid-table teams. Which leaves us with, with the Pokal and what a round it was. Uh, just hitting a few highlights. I mean, uh, we know already there were little Bundesliga teams left and uh, two of them got eliminated already by, by default because the uh, Bundesliga teams were playing each other. But we also, uh, Bundesliga 2 clashes quite some. Lautern get two late goals against Nürnberg Nür 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 to win their game. 2-0, so uh, it's good to see a uh, Kai Kaiserlautern back also. Magdeburg held a really a lead for a long time against Fortuna Düsseldorf uh, through Attic, then Niemitz in the 87th equalizes and he gets in stoppage time the winner, so Fortuna Düsseldorf also through. Gladbach against Wolfsburg, not a great game. Uh, it is then decided in the 120th minute through Kone who gets the winner, Gladbach moving on, as, as we see, have actually quite, quite a good, good chance to go far. Uh, uh, St. Pauli and Leverkusen have easy wins, Saarbrücken, steamrolling Frankfurt. Frankfurt was not matching the energy, and this is bad, to be honest, from Fra Frankfurt, but then, you know, they brought the energy against Bayern Munich, maybe they need a little bit more um, luck, but Saarbrücken, a third league, league team, still in the running uh, after beating Bayern. They also asked Frank Frankfurt and we'll see in the draw they have another home game. That much I can, can tell you. The best game definitely was uh, Hertha against Ham, Hamburg. Uh, that was a relegation duel not long ago that Hertha won um, convincingly. This time around uh, it was much, much closer. The uh, the, the man of the match was Reze, who gets the go-ahead goal and then an equalizer in the 90th minute for Hertha because Hamburg, just before the half through Ferrari and Benesch, had actually turned around the game and looked good for the win. They really look, look, look good for the win. And then they even take the lead to Königsdorf uh, in, um, in the overtime. And again, Reze assists Kenny 
and makes it 3-3 in the 120th minute. So two last minute goals for Hertha uh, to stay alive and then they win the penalty pal shoot because Königsdorfer, who just had put Hamburg ahead, misses his the fourth penalty and Reze converts and he's the big hero. So, but this was a, a true cup fight. On the other side, Stuttgart Dortmund. It was like the first game between those, those two. Girasi and Silas get in the second half the goals, but there should have been more. Yes, Bino Gittens goal was uh, disallowed for offset with a short period. It was around the 60 minute, but Dortmund actually had Samsung or something over, but Stuttgart always could react and outplay Dortmund. And so Stuttgart are through, would be the favorites together with Leverkusen, I would say. Uh, however, they play each other. So that's the final before the final. And we see already that then there's only Gladbach against Saarbrücken. So there might only at most be two Bundesliga teams left in the Pokal. We have two Liga 2 uh, duels between Hertha and Kaiserslautern and St. Pauli and Fortuna Düsseldorf, the latter of which uh, has a very distinct, uh, how, how do I say, alternative feel to it. So I really, really like that one. Any case, that was it for me from Germany. Please let me know what you think, where the league is going. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.